Today, I wanted to take a look at some more discoveries from the James Webb, once again focusing on the edge of the observable universe, or essentially the so-called cosmic dawn. The first one or two billion years after the universe was created, that the scientists today are trying to understand a little bit better in order to understand how the universe evolved over time. And as you already know from some of the previous videos, in the last year and a half, James Webb Space Telescope made quite a few somewhat unusual and potentially very unexpected discoveries. But I really wanted to start with this. This is actually a recently released website that you can find in a link in the description that has now been released by the James Webb team for everyone to peruse and for everyone to enjoy. And this shows us a tiny piece of night skies that's essentially been observed by the James Webb for a long time during the so-called JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, also known as JADES, with the light from some of the more distant galaxies traveling for essentially 13 billion years. And so basically this is one of the first deep field images released by the James Webb team that now anyone can look at. And you might even discover something nobody has ever seen before or something that's surprising or unusual. And there is quite a lot of stuff to explore here. Approximately 100,000 different galaxies. And if you extrapolate this to the entire night skies, it means that there is at least nearly a trillion galaxies in the entire observable universe. But even going through these 100,000 is obviously going to take a while. And so if you're going to be taking a look at this, uh, well, just to give you some hints, first of all, if you see something bright that has a lot of spikes, that's most likely a star, as in a star in our galaxy. But if you see something like this that has possibly a star and a galactic shape, it could be either a star in front of a galaxy, or it could be a very powerful quasar, or basically an active galactic nucleus, a big black hole. And if you're not sure what exactly this is, right here in the top right corner, you can actually change some of the frequencies of light to maybe see this in a different light, which can actually then maybe help you figure out exactly what this is. And so yeah, it looks like this is a star in front of a galaxy, not a quasar. And of course, there are quite a lot of other galaxies that just look like galaxies, with many extremely far away. And I think here's one that possibly is a quasar, because it does appear more like a hotspot in the middle of the galaxy, not really as an individual star. And so lots of different objects to explore here, if you want to try something different. And hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about some of the major discoveries from the last few months coming out of the James Webb, specifically focusing on things nobody expected. And let's actually start with one in regards to quasars and black holes. Because one of the main goals for the GATES program is to essentially try to figure out the mystery of ancient black holes. How exactly did they form? How did some of them get so massive, so extremely fast? And how did they influence the evolution of galaxies and, of course, the formation of stars? And relatively recently, the scientists did discover a somewhat unusual black hole extremely early on. We've actually discussed this in more detail in one of the videos in the description, but it's essentially a black hole that's now been confirmed to be a black hole, referred to as UHZ-1. It existed approximately 470 million years after the Big Bang, and it seems to be about 40 million solar masses, 10 times as big as the one in the Milky Way. But what makes this black hole unusual is, of course, its mass compared to the stars in the galaxy. It seems to be at least 10%, possibly more than that, of the entire mass of the galaxy. And that's very unusual. In pretty much most galaxies known to us, usually the mass ratio is much lower. Only some very unique galaxies, like the ones we've discussed in the video in the description, the super compact galaxies, have a similar ratio of star mass to the black hole mass. So by itself this is kind of strange. Nevertheless, it's clearly there, it's also very very active, and it was detected by both Chandra and James Webb Space Telescope. But despite this detection of a massive black hole, there is actually something else very unusual that was discovered recently. Previously, a lot of scientists had an assumption that we're going to find a lot of black holes in the early universe, and they should be all over the place, helping various galaxies evolve, producing tons and tons of light, possibly even serving as the main mechanism that essentially caused reionization of the universe. And specifically, they expected to find a lot more black holes compared to the previous survey conducted by Spitzer Telescope, but they didn't suggesting that they seem to be growing much slower and that they're also in much smaller numbers. Basically implying that, for some reason, a lot of these early black holes are definitely not growing as fast as a lot of studies anticipated, and more importantly, do not seem to have as much an effect on these early galaxies as we always thought. It was actually believed that maybe supermassive black holes were one of the main forces behind the early galactic evolution, but this study suggests otherwise. It really suggests that ancient galaxies and ancient black holes 
behave differently from today and very differently from what we expected. But then if it's not black holes, then what? How did the galaxies evolve and became the way they are? Well, some of these answers can actually come from this image I previously showed you. Because once again, a lot of these new discoveries suggest that the galaxies themselves were actually much brighter and were glowing much more than we ever thought possible. Here, a lot of these galaxies during the cosmic dawn, and here we're talking about 90% of all of them, had a huge amount of glowing gas on the inside, producing very extreme emission lines not seen in any modern galaxies. Which of course suggests that not only were these galaxies different in terms of the way they looked, they were also very different in their fundamental properties. For example, a lot of these teenage galaxies that existed for maybe a billion years or so turn out to be extremely hot as well, with temperatures of about 13,000 Celsius or 24,000 Fahrenheit, or at least in some of the hottest areas in the galaxy. And that's much, much hotter than anything in the Milky Way. And so overall, all of this kind of suggests that many of these early galaxies potentially resembled a typical nebula. They were basically super bright, glowing with a lot of light, producing a lot of heat, with all of this being the excitation of all of this gas by very powerful stars in the middle. And so they basically resemble these huge glowing clouds. Maybe not as bright as some nebula, but definitely much brighter than any modern galaxy. Which would explain why many of these galaxies appear much brighter than the scientists anticipated when they started looking at them. And a lot of this brightness is really the result of extremely fast bursty star formation that essentially produces a lot of ultraviolet light, a lot of brightness and a lot of heat that then illuminates the rest of the galaxy, overall making this early universe a much much brighter place. But still a somewhat surprising place because when the researchers were looking at some of these galaxies, they were also able to analyze their spectra, discovering what elements they have on the inside. That's the beauty of using the James Webb, it's able to do that. And here they started finding a lot of materials that were not just hydrogen and helium, which though made sense for some of the more advanced galaxies, did not make a lot of sense for some of the younger ones. And at least one galaxy located at a redshift of 12, or basically when the universe was only 350 million years old, turned out to contain stuff nobody expected. It was enriched in metals. Okay, side note. In astronomy, metallicity just refers to anything that's not hydrogen and helium. So this galaxy was enriched in other stuff. Specifically, there was carbon, there seemed to be nitrogen, there seemed to be oxygen, and even neon. Even though technically we only expect hydrogen, helium, maybe a little bit of lithium, and potentially just tiny tiny bits of beryllium. All of that was there too, but with extras. Making this the first confirmation ever of a galaxy at a redshift of 12 that seems to suggest a lot of complex elements already existed back then as well. And normally metallicity is super important for, for example, planetary formation because obviously most planets today contain non-hydrogen and non-helium elements, but even for the evolution of galaxies and stars, it's kind of important to understand how everything started. And while the original explanation always involved the idea of so-called population 3 stars, massive stars containing just hydrogen and just helium going supernova, creating more complex elements. One of the goals of James Webb is to try to find these stars. But because the science has discovered carbon, neon, nitrogen, and so on, it potentially implies that a lot of these early stars, population 3 stars, were not actually just made of hydrogen and helium. Or maybe even that population 3 stars are a somewhat incorrect hypothesis. Although obviously here we don't really know where this carbon came from and what created a lot of these other elements. For example, one suggestion is that there were population 3 stars that exploded, but all of this happened very quickly, and so now we're just seeing the evolution of the second stage. The other suggestion is black holes, or specifically the central black hole. Maybe it was powerful enough to somehow influence everything, and was able to enrich the chemical abundance inside the galaxy. And so yeah, just for now it's going to be a mystery without an actual answer. But despite all of these mysteries, there were also some discoveries that provided a few answers. For example, one of the observations revealed 20 galaxies relatively close to each other that seem to be forming a new megastructure. It's actually now known as the Cosmic Vine. It seems to be 13 million light years across, 650,000 light years wide, and existed about 12 billion years ago. And it essentially represents what's known as a protocluster. We're seeing a formation of huge galactic clusters that now exist everywhere around us. If you want to learn more about these, check out one of the recent videos about Loniakea the supercluster where we live. And on top of this, this cluster is still growing and seems to actually be one of the biggest clusters discovered so early in the universe. But intriguingly, around this time, 
Another team of scientists discovered another protocluster even earlier. This one, 13.1 billion years old, basically the oldest discovered so far. Although here we only see four galaxies, but definitely also combining coming closer together. If simulated, it would look something like this. And so because this earlier cluster has only four galaxies, the slightly older cluster has 20, and much older clusters have a lot more, we basically get to see the progression of how superclusters formed over time by basically seeing these tiny slides of the past. And that by itself matches with all the predictions scientists have right now about how clusters form and of course about how universe evolved as well. And so at least in terms of the bigger structure formation, most things here seem to kind of make sense. Even though when it comes to individual galaxies, things are just a little bit more surprising. But at least one more discovery, a somewhat interesting discovery, came from a different telescope from the James Webb. It actually came from ALMA. And here this was the image of a galaxy known as 9IO9 that's actually kind of difficult to see. It's that red arc around the brighter galaxy that you see in the middle. And so basically this is a result of a gravitational lens. And so that lens galaxy that existed when the universe was about 2.5 billion years old revealed something we always wanted to see but could not see because most of these galaxies are practically invisible. The scientists confirmed the existence of magnetic fields. And here we see emissions approximately 16,000 light years across, but approximately 1,000 times weaker than what we have on planet Earth. And all of this is seen because this is essentially various polarized emissions from the dust inside this galaxy that just seems to be very active, forming stars about 1,000 times faster than the Milky Way, and as a result seems to produce very powerful magnetic fields. And because of this vigorous star formation, and because in this case the fields are actually oriented parallel to the molecular disk, it essentially confirms that many of these structures inside of these galaxies can form very rapidly and produce a lot of radiation and a lot of light. Which is precisely what I mentioned previously, and what was actually detected by the James Webb. So in that sense, these two stories kind of relate, with one just showing things in a slightly different frequency. Here we basically get to see polarized light produced by powerful magnetic fields. And all of this, to some extent, hidden somewhere in one of these images. So do check it out in one of the links in the description. And so at least for now, these are some of the recent discoveries from the edge of the universe, and discoveries that I guess to some extent, nobody actually expected. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out other videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.